Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Punch Up Plays, our very first time doing this, Neil. And so we're uh, changing the format. Uh, if you've been watching our YouTube channel, you know we've been doing live streams for a few weeks now. Uh, but we've decided to change that up and start playing face-to-face -face here. So uh, the idea behind Punch It Played is to, to show you some of the things that we're playing out in the world, as well as maybe a chance for us to experience some new games and kind of talk about them through the process of what we like, don't like, et cetera, et cetera. So today, Neil, we are going to play Age of Sigmar Champions. So uh, tell me a little bit about your experience with the game so far. Well, I like this game a lot. I... Obviously, you got me into it. Um, just playing those starter decks that day. I, I fed you the digital crack or the physical crack. Right, crash. yeah. And then I downloaded the app and like <laughs> I've played I don't know way too many games. Yeah. Because uh, so, they just they have like their world world leaderboards ranking, and that is just sucked up my life. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> grinding that that leaderboard, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, just a, real quick, for those of you not familiar with Age of Sigmar Champions, first off, this is not the normal card backs. I, I, I put card sleeves on these. These are my old Conquest sleeves from the LCG days. That's the back of the card. Just so it's a very, those. it's a really nice like, like card back because it's embossed. I don't know if you can see it very well. Yeah, on the stream, you, you probably aren't going to capture that on the stream, but it does have a nice tactical feel to the back of the card. It does make like not wanting to put them in the sleeves a thing. And while we're talking about like just. The physical card itself one of the cool things that this game does that's brand new is it has a QR code type deal on the border of the card I don't know if you can see it very well but there's these little pips mm -hmm. on each so each individual copy of War of Star Strike is different and the reason that they do that is so that you can scan them into the app so if you have this physical card like Jesse does he can scan it into his app and have it in his uh, digital collection as well. And yes, this one's already scanned, so for those of you now trying to scan my card, <laughs> too bad. All the cards you're going to see on stream today have been scanned and claimed by me, so uh, no dice there. Maybe maybe in the future we'll give away some packs or something if it becomes something you want to see us play more of. But um, I think some of the things that like our users should, and, and watchers should know is that this is a trading card game which means that the packs that you buy are randomized. I mean, just like a Magic or a Yu-Gi-Oh! or a Pokemon. But I think what makes this, to me, what was the selling point for me was the digital app. The, the idea that, you know, even if I don't have a local community of players, which is traditionally what I run into sometimes when I get into an LCG, take L5R here, which is basically just dead. I like L5R. I want to play it a lot more. But there's just not a community here for me to play with, so it makes it very difficult without traveling an hour or something to find a, find a group of people that play it. Um, so for me, it was like, oh, well, I don't have to worry about the community, per se, coming up here. And as much as I love building communities, I just don't have enough time between all the punch-it duties and my day job and, and a couple of kids and all of these different things to, to, to build a community. So uh, the fact that I can buy physical cards, scan them on my app, and then play the game like was a huge selling point for me yeah just always always being able to play a match when you just feel like you want to play a match is a big plus because like you said like l5r or honestly a lot of card games outside of the big three are not just here in lincoln but anywhere you know you you have your little group of friends that maybe play it with you and that's great that's wonderful but you know if you want that next level of excitement you got to get people you don't know other people right feel the to change up the meta for you, and it's hard. It's and, I, and I think they've done some amazing things uh, with this game from the digital side to really reinforce buying the physical game. Because you can you can go out and play Digital Magic, right? Like, you can play Magic Online, you can play Magic Arena, uh, you can play Hearthstone, which is a digital game, and I think that those games are all great, but they, there's no tie-in to the physical games. And obviously, Hearthstone, Hearthstone doesn't have a physical right. game, but Magic definitely does. <laughs> and Arena doesn't tie... MTG Arena or MTG Online doesn't tie the digital game to your physical product like this does. And so I think this is a really unique way of like getting both sides of it working for you. And then if you own physical cards in the digital game, you earn in-game currency faster because right. you level up your cards. So I'm going to show the app really quick and then we're going to jump in and show the cards and then we'll start playing the game. But I wanted everybody to be aware of this game and what it's capable of because I think it's it's really well done. 
Yeah, one of the big things <coughs> that drew me, me to this game in the first place, the first couple times we played it, is just how simple it is, and yet it still involves complex decisions. Like, there's only two things you do in the game. You take an action, or you draw a card. Those are the only two things. And your actions are only play a card or activate the ability that's on a card. Right. And that's it. You get to do two of those things a turn, and then you pass. And there's no resources uh, besides, like, the number of actions you can take and the number of cards in your hand. There is only just cards in play, um, and they slowly do what they do, and then they're done, and then you play more cards. And just that, that elegant system translates to the digital world so well mm -hmm. it's just it's really simple like if you ever played magic online it's very complicated there's a ton of like times when you have priority like when you can pass priority like all that stuff in a digital world is not nearly as fluid as it is when you're just sitting across from your friends playing at the right. table because you make a lot of assumptions in the real world and the computer can't do that this game because it's so simple to play just in digital is great. It's yep. relaxing. It's it it just it works so good. So so there's a couple of things that I want to show. This is the new front end for it that just came out this week. Um, I, I'm currently it tells you your current level. This is based on the number of games you played. So I, I I've played this game more than I probably care to admit. Sorry everybody for for that. But uh, it has given me a unique insight into the depth of the game. And understanding uh, a lot of the interactions of all four factions at this point. I've played all four factions a fairly su substantial amount. Uh, there's even more detail. So this goes into the individual levels of each of the factions I've played. Yes, death players. I play a lot of death. I do like death. It's just... Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> well, you're, you're going to be the internet's hero. Because if we looked at my stats, I'm like level 150 or whatever. But it's like... 130 destruction and 10 everything else. <laughs> you, got, you just got the daily quest where you had to play a certain number of cards for each faction or whatever. Well, so, you get a pack if you get to level 10. So that's I right. them all the uh, time. There you go. So then this talks about the, the competitive scene that, that exists in the digital app. They have a ranked play mode. The ranked play mode is a, is a really interesting ladder system where as you win, you eventually get to a certain point where you have to go through a promotion series and win a certain number of games. Oops, sorry. BTN's trying to update me. Uh, a certain number of games... You know, to, to progress into the next league, I'm working my way towards gold. And yes, I'm doing that as a death player. So that is uh, that is a real grind compared to some of the things that have been going on in the, the game. And, and Play Fusion, the creators of the game, is doing a lot to yeah, the, uh, fix some of the meta problems that have come out of competitive play already. Yeah, I like I said, I ground Destruction all the way up to Platinum 2 in like two weeks. Yep. And... Not because of me personally, but because of like the power level of those cards. Play Fusion has been doing some updates to the game in the digital world and changing what some of the cards do, which is an advantage that Hearthstone and Eternal and the other digital games have always had, where if something's out of whack, even if their testers are great and they do a bunch of testing, like they can't hit everything the same way that a digital world can, where just hundreds of thousands of games are played exactly. in a very short amount of time. So if they see something like that, that's out of whack, they get the opportunity to put out an update, to change what the cards do, and it's similar to an errata in paper, which mm -hmm. is what happens to the paper cards, of course, but it happens in real time, and it happens on the app, and it's just very easy to understand what they do, and so, for instance, the Destruction deck, which maybe, I, I don't know if it's overpowered or not, but uh, I think it's the best deck. It owned a lot of the, the upper levels of the leaderboards. I mean, you get into yeah. the, this... Like, going through the bronze levels and the early silver levels, you played a lot of diversified meta, a lot of people playing just what they wanted to play. So there was a lot of uh, variation in the games, and your, your deck had to be tuned to kind of handle multiple variations. But when you get into this, even like Division One of Silver, where I'm at now, it started turning into, before the most recent changes, it started turning into about 8 out of your 10 matches were against Destruction. Right. Essentially, every match I played in Gold Series was just the Destruction Mirror. Yeah. And... Like, that sounds bad, but my point in bringing that up to all you guys that, that maybe are considering playing this game, or like are like, well, that sounds stupid because there's only one deck to play. Well, that's just not true, because as of Thursday, they're making changes to destruction cards, they're balancing out the meta, and right now the meta is very interesting and up in the air, and before we started this stream, even, Jesse and I were sitting here talking about 
like what the next deck is, like what you should be playing. Right, because as soon as you, you as soon as you make changes to one faction like this, there's going to be another one that rises to the top, right? Yep. But you're never going to get perfect balance. But the the goal would be to get everything within a, a, a threshold of reasonability where each faction is competing, uh, and and that rock paper scissors meta becomes so important. And I think they're getting there because I think that like order right now has is the rock to to death. Right, but like death is kind of right now the rock to uh, chaos, and like chaos is kind of the rock to destruction, and so like you get this, you get this nice evolving, rotating meta, and oh by the way, death and chaos, like sometimes they can go head to head, and because because chaos is like hurting itself to try to win, and death is healing itself and drawing cards, like oh th there's some really interesting games that come out yeah. of those. So so I think Play Fusion is doing it right. I, I do think they're doing it right both in the app space. And then how to handle it from a physical space before they just start releasing a bunch of, well, we need to change this card, restrict this card, ban this card, whatever it may be. Uh, they're, they're doing that specifically for the reason of, uh, you know, using the, the digital space as a test bed for what's going to happen in the physical space. And we'll see how that plays into because PAX Unplugged next month is going to be one of the largest Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions tournaments. So I'm really mm -hmm. excited to see how PAX Unplugged's tournament unfolds. Because I'm sure they're using this information to understand how they're going to release whatever is going to happen at PAX Unplugged. And maybe they won't. Maybe they'll let PAX Unplugged just go. But uh, I, I think that you will see the digital space influence the physical space as we as we proceed further down the road. So if I highly recommend downloading the app if you have any interest in this game. You can play it for free. free. They give yeah. you a bunch of cards. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So... Enough about what may be the competitive meta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about. Let's the... talk about the cards a little bit. So there are there are basically um, there there are five kinds of cards in the game. Uh, if we can grab yours too, yeah. we'll we'll start with the, the the foundation, which is the champions. That's what the name is for. So there's two kinds of champions. Uh, technically, there's a third kind. I don't have one well handy it's, with me. It's just both kinds. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So together. so we have these red bordered champions. This is Vora Star Strike here. He's an order champion. And, and Voris is a, a warrior, so he's bordered by red. And then we have Snazgar Snake Mullet over here. He's a destruction champion, and uh, he's bordered in blue to indicate that he's a wizard. And so wizards can play spells, but can't play units, typically. And warriors can play units, but can't play spells. So you have these two other types that we just got done talking about then, and we'll, we'll come back to the corners on the cards, but we'll put, put out a spell on a unit just so we have those. So you have uh, a unit, which is also bordered in red, to tell you that it can be played on a warrior, and a spell, which is bordered in blue. You can also just tell right under the name what kind of, what kind of card it is. Um, so let's get into the corners, because this is the part that really sets this game apart from right. every it's, other card game I've played. It's both a cool mechanic from gameplay perspective, and just, like I think, a very cool design choice from an aesthetic per uh, perspective on the card. Right. Um, so as you can see yep, on ahead. these cards, each corner has its own little symbol, and the champions are different than the spells or units. Um, they have these kind of like they call them clunky corners. They call them clunky. It's like a square with a round top, it's, right? Um, and then the corners on the units and the spells are circles, and the difference is that during the first step of your turn, your cards rotate. Mm -hmm. If they have the smooth corners, these circles. Yep, they rotate so, uh, counterclockwise. It has a one, and you notice that like they're oriented such that as it turns, you continue to uh, read it correctly for how it's supposed to be. Correct. And then when they're, when they're out of corners, this one has all four, this one only has two, then they're done. They, they, they leave play yep. uh, after they're finished. The clunky corners operate similarly, but they are... They don't go every turn. They go and you meet a certain requirement, and the requirement is this symbol that is within the, the clunky corner. Right. So in the case of Snazgar here, when you play a spell on Snazgar, so if we play the Invigorating Chant on Snazgar, because his clunky corner is play a spell, he would rotate to the next clunky corner, which means that once this spell exhausts or leaves play, if I play a second spell, he would then rotate to this next ability. Now this is this is uh, quest. As they call them quest. Sorry. This is an ability quest. So this is a specific kind of quest that requires you to play the next kind of card, which we hadn't talked about yet, but I'll go ahead and show. So then we have ability cards. And ability cards are played directly from our hand. They're played onto the champion's lane, and they do something in that lane. So um, it's one of my actions for the turn, and like in the case of Triumph and Smash, 
uh, I can remove an opponent's unit. And if I do that, and I, I can rotate one of my units backwards one step, which allows my unit to stay on the battlefield a little longer. Additionally, when ro units rotate, they re-trigger their corners. So there's there's value in playing with the rotational status of your of your cards. Uh, and this is a special kind of ability in that it can be used by any champion, meaning they can warriors or wizards can use it. There are other abilities in the game that can only be used by warriors or only be used by uh, wizards, and those will be represented the same way that the units are with either a red border or a blue border, respectfully. Um, but you can see this is the unit, gives you the units or the ability symbol, which, which means if we play this, this on Snazgar, it would rotate him one step further. And then this final one you see here is the healing uh, ability. So if he heals, which Invigorating Chan is a heal, if he heals when he's on that corner, then you would complete the quest. And when you complete the quest, that's where powerful things start to happen here. This is where the game kind of goes uh, right. goes but bonkers. The and, last type of card is a blessing. And, yep. and like the champions, they start in play. Mm -hmm. and uh, But they're face down. So they would start in play face down. I usually put them underneath my champion to start. So once you complete a quest, once you've completed all four corners of a, a, a guy's quest, then the blessing is going to flip up immediately. And there are different kinds of blessings. Some are passive like this, which means that it's going to do something on clunky corners, and so every time you trigger it, do your thing. Others are instants. They, they do something immediately. Some, some are passives that don't have corners. They're always on. Mm -hmm. Some have smooth corners like this, and they'll rotate out after a certain number of turns. Right. Um, but they're just they're powerful one-time effects that only happen if you manage to complete your champion's quest all four corners. Right. Um, and some of the the factions are better at doing that, and some of the factions are worse at doing that, and some of the blessings are better, and some of the blessings are worse. The um, the only other aspect of the blessings that sh we should note is that the blessings are random. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the game, where Jesse we, and I will we choose pick the four. four. Right. Right. You pick four. From there's 12 or 15 or something. For yeah, each I think there's like 15 per faction or something. Um, so it's a fairly sizable pool to choose from based on your yeah. deck. And you pick four of them. Um, so at the beginning of the game, Jesse and I will lay those out at random of the four. We won't know which is where. And then we will make a choice for the orientation of our champions. Um, so that's strategic, but you don't get to know like which blessing you're always going to flip up. So that's a little random. Mm -hmm. But most of them are so powerful that like... Even though they do different things, you're still happy with like whatever Whichever blessings you get. You can get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so some factions quest better than others, and some decks quest better than others. I mean, and so I've seen, you know, I've seen deck builds in my time at the game where you just focus on fast questing. So you're just like everything you're doing is just trying to complete quests and and get to your blessings as soon as possible. I've seen other decks that maybe don't matter as much about the the blessings. They have impact on the game if you flip one, but you can win the game without them. Um, and so, you know, I think it just all depends on what your what the deck design is going to do. And so, I don't want to spend too much more time just talking about the game. I just want to talk a little bit about hero layout. Um, and that the only reason we want to do that is just for the sake of uh, showing you how this works and how it operates in the game. And then we're going to dive in and we're going to start playing some games because I think that's more important than us just talking aimlessly about it. So, I've got four heroes here that I've selected. When I build my heroes, I have these little green numbers on the bottom of each card that are of value. So I have Vor's Star Strike, that is 8. I have Vanda's Hammerhand, which is 16. I have Protector Prime, which is 5. And then I have Liberator Prime, which is 1. My four heroes must be 20 or less in total points. You don't have to use the full 20. I am using the full 20 in this build here today. I'm not sure if your deck actually does. I think it might be a little um, cheaper. It I, may have, I, may have, like... I may have maxed this one out compared to the yeah, online version. Yeah, this is 20. Yep. So I have an online version because they're talking about changing the Warboss Recruiter, which is one of Neil's champions, that is less points because I, I figure if they increase the cost of Warboss Recruiter, then I'm still I'm still within the rules of whatever the changes to Warboss may come out to be. Um, so I've been playing two different versions of this deck, the physical version we have here today and then the non-physical. Um, and so each one of these champions has its own abilities and, and you know those, those will come into play as well as their own unique quests. So we'll get into more of that, but I'm playing an order deck here today. Uh, this is a uh, an all warrior configuration, so that means that I will not be playing any spells on my side. But Neil, you do have one warrior in that Snazgar, so um, we'll see some spells come out on Snazgar uh, that could have some pretty big impact on the game. Uh, I will say that that particular version of the deck I haven't I haven't played it in a while with the loud uh, the, I think it's the loudmouth mega boss. Loudmouth mega boss, yeah. So like he. Uh, I don't remember if this is going to make it better or worse. So I, I apologize if it's worse. 
Loudmouth has been uh, up and coming on the app recently, though mm-hmm. I don't know how different it is now that well, I, I was other playing parts a, are changed. I was but. playing it with the Rip Tooth online because of the, the extra points that I get right. out of that. And the Rip Tooth is such a fast quest like character, you know, unit that like I think Rip Tooth might be better in the deck, but I I don't yeah. know. Well, there's there's a lot of uh, double Rip Tooth decks even. Yeah, oh yeah. Just because he quests so fast. so fast. He's so Rip. So we don't have a Rip Tooth here, but just so everybody understands who's listening, Rip Tooth has this cool ability where you um, you can whenever you remove a unit in front of him, you complete the next step of his quest automatically, regardless of whether you were supposed to or not. So so his third corner is an ability, right? So if you can get him over to his third corner, and then you just play the removal ability card, which every faction has one removal ability card. The order one is Triumph and Smash. Death is called. Uh, uh, Devour, and then Chaos is called Blood Hunt, I believe, and, and then... Uh, and some of the factions have other cards that remove cards as well. Right. The only two that actually trigger the Rip the uh, rip Tooth are... Um, There's the Sweeping Gore Grunta Deadly, that can do it. Sweeping Gore Grunta and Deadly Chop. And Deadly Chop, yep. Those two cards are the best, the, the only two destruction cards at this time that can s- swing him through uh, a second corner. But it is, it is equally as good where you're like, okay, I played a unit, my unit gets removed, or I played a unit that doesn't do damage, which is a second corner, and then you deadly chop, which would complete that anyways. But, um, you know, it's just really good when you get into that third corner and go that way. Yeah. So so Neil has shuffled up his four blessings and laid those out in front of him randomly, so we don't know what those four yep, are. I don't know what they are. I know... I know which ones they could possibly be, but I don't know what order they're in. Right. Down here. And you see we've set our health at 30. That's not a... Comp- completely accurate yet because we don't technically know what each of our champions we're facing is so we'll explain that as we get into the game setup but you, everybody starts the game with 30 health and then that number gets modified based upon your champion selection right all right so hopefully i'm going to shuffle these decks were just freshly built so you know it's it's hard to say for sure but uh we're going to put our decks off to the side i'm going to shuffle my blessings and lay those out um And again, 40k sleeves, so please keep in mind that this is a fantasy-based game, not the, the futuristic game, but I thought it was still somewhat thematic, and since they haven't come out with uh, thematic card sleeves yet for this game, I thought it was... A, a, if this orc didn't have a gun, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. That, that's true. That's they look the same. <laughs> that's 100% true. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll, and I roll a 93, Neil. And you roll a 98. Okay. I'm the greatest. You are the greatest. <laughs> so we're going to keep the Team Neil, Team Jesse hashtags going. I mean, that's that's not going to die. That's something we did during our live stream. So, you know, you can uh, tweet at us. You can, um, you know, comment on the YouTube video, whatever it is. Just let us know who you root for throughout the process. And If me beating Jesse's 93 on the dice roll doesn't get me 10 hashtag Neils, I'm going to get very upset. All right. Well, let's get 10 <laughs> hashtag Neils for, for Neil. And then I want 11, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, all right. So... Neil, you won the dice roll. You get to decide. Do you want to um, do you want to go first or second in the game? I would like to go second. Okay, so a couple of reasons why Neil wants to go second. First, that means I have to put my first champion out in front of him. So he gets to decide his placement based on my very first champion placement. Second, Neil gets an extra card to start the game. He gets five cards instead of four, which is very powerful in this game because we don't have the traditional draw a card every turn like other card games. And we'll show that how, how that works during gameplay. All right, so since Neil has won the dice roll and elected to go second, I'm going to start by putting my Liberator Prime out here on the left-hand corner. And so Liberator Prime is just a, a one champion cost unit, uh, or champion, but he's got some pretty easy corners to work off of, and I think he'll be good for me. Okay. Um, similarly, I will play my... Uh, one point champion in front of Jesse's in this lane. Right. Now, Neil, because he chose to go second, he plays one champion in front of him, but he has to place a second champion now. So he breaks the serve, if you will, by placing his second champion at this point. Right. And to be clear, you don't have to start on the ends or anything. No. Jesse and I just have chosen to do that. Yep. Um, it's actually very important where the champions go. It can have some pretty um, big impacts in the game. Yeah. So I'm going to play my second one here. I'm going to play that loudmouth we talked about Okay. Uh, over on the other side. All right. Now, that's unfortunate for me. I don't think that's exactly where I want loudmouth to be, but I'm going to put a protector prime in front of him. 
And so Protector Prime cost me five of my 20 points, but he has reduced damage received from highlighted champion units by one. So if Loudmouth starts dealing damage to me, it reduces the amount of damage Loudmouth can deal. And then I'm going to put a Vandus Hammerhand next to the Protector Prime. And so Vandus is when a unit controlled by this champion, uh, my champion, is removed by your opponent, deal three damage to them. So... If he does try to do some sort of re removal shenanigans with the loudmouth, I have a good chance of at least getting some damage in, in that process. Okay. Vandus so, is also really good for putting high value targets that your opponent doesn't want them to get rid of. Yeah, three damage is a lot of damage in this game. That ability is is pretty relevant. So I'm going to play my Snazgar in front of that guy. Okay. Um, and I'll talk about the, the reason for that here uh, as I play my next guy. <laughs> um, there's the war boss. So, war boss, one of his corners is remove a unit. And that being the case, I don't want him in front of the Varus. Just, it's like very marginal. Vandus, but it's, yeah. Or in front of the Vandus. Yeah. Um, it's like very marginal, but eventually I probably want to remove a card on his last corner to complete his quest. And in doing so, if he was in front of the Vandus... It would damage. It would, it's going to damage Neil. So it helps me dictate Neil's placement just a little bit. And then I'm going to add the Boris Star Strike, and he's got a Heroic Axe. So let's talk about Heroic Axe for just a second, because we didn't talk about that. So Snazgar Sigmola has a Heroic Axe, and so does the War Boss Recruiter. And so does Loudmouth. And so does Loudmouth. So you've got three Heroic Axe as an action. So one of, one of your two actions every turn would be the opportunity to use the Heroic Act. You can only use one Heroic Act on all your champions per turn. So Loudmouth's Heroic Act is when you when you use it, you rotate a, a unit two extra times. So uh, it gives you two more corners immediately out of that unit. War Boss Recruiters is you reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a unit, you can deploy it onto War Boss immediately, which is a very powerful effect. Vora Star Strike has a Heroic Act, and his Heroic Act is restart a highlighted Stormcast unit, and I can hit any of my Stormcast units on my board. But his ability is only once per game, so I only get that opportunity once a game. And the Snazgar Sneak Mullet also has a once per game Heroic, which is uh, you can rotate a spell all the way to its final corner, which has huge impact on the game, and whether it be in a damage ability or whether it be like massive healing just to kind of swing the tide back your direction. But I think we're ready to get started, so let's talk about how to set the health now. So above each one of the champions, uh, green symbol is a red symbol. And this tells you how much health it either adds or subtra subtracts from your 30. So the Protector Prime would reduce me by 1, but the Vandus Hammerhand, the Vor Star Strike, and the Liberator Prime all give me positives, 2, 2, and 1. So normally I'd go to 35, but because of the Protector Prime, I'm going to go to 34 to start. And I have a positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, positive 1. Does that mean a 32? Yep. So Neil's going to have a little less health than me, but his deck also has a little more healing than I do. So I think that'll work out uh, probably okay for him at the end. So now we're going to start the game, and since Neil's elected to go second, he gets five cards, and I get four. Okay. So I now get two actions, and with those two actions, I get to uh, take two different actions here. And so... I'm going to go ahead and put a Disruptive Liberator on the Vorus Star Strike, which will rotate his corner around one. And then I'm going, which says uh, it's got a blank on the first corner, which means that it does nothing from a damage perspective. But because it's not an X, Highlighted Champion cannot deploy units. If this was an X, he wouldn't come into effect until his first rotation. So for now, the Warboss Recruiter can't deploy any units. And then on the second and third corners, I'll get to deal some damage. And then I'm going to take my last action... And, hmm, let's go ahead and put out the Paladin Decimator on the Vanda's Hammerhand. So Paladin Decimator says, when unit control by this champion is removed, or obviously we know what he does, but Paladin Decimator is an X, one, two, three. So it's a four corner damage uh, unit. So that was my two actions. I don't get to draw any new cards. It's now Neil's turn. Okay. Um, so to start, the first thing I'm going to do is a Heroic Act of the War Blaster Crew. Okay, so we reveal the top card. Draw one, draw one face up if it's an auric unit. Yep, that's uh, important. I get to play it for free. It is an auric unit, but because of the disruptive literate, liberator, you won't be able to deploy it. So, normally, if it's an auric, which this is, it has a little auric symbol up here, um, I would get to deploy it without using an action as part of the heroic act. Because the liberator can't do that, but it's still, I still draw it. Yep. So that makes that's what makes the war boss so effective, because... 
It's it's like a free draw before you have to make a play, but you do use one of your actions, so you only have one action remaining now for this right. turn. And something we should talk about here, since I'm using the heroic axe, and I probably will be quite a bit with this recruiter. Um, even though my guys have three different heroic acts, I can only do one of them a turn, right. regardless of which one it is. I can't Correct. do like war bosses and then loud mouse. I can only do one or the other. Um, you can only do one heroic act from any source. I'm right. Here. So with my second action, I'm gonna play a bruta. Brute smashes in front of my loudmouth. All right, so that first corner has a two value on it, which means I take two damage. I go to 32. And then he's a stacking unit. So what a stacking unit means is, is that you can put him on top of another unit. Normally, once a unit's in a lane, you're, you're, that lane is occupied by that unit until it leaves play. But with a stacking unit, you can, you can put units on top of non-stacking units or whatever it may be. So you could play the Brute Smasher into a blank lane like he just did, or you could play it into a lane that already and has a unit. You'll definitely see me do that throughout the course of this game. Yeah, that, game, um, that deck's going to leverage stacking. The, uh, the stacking unit can be set on top of a non-stacking unit, and the unit underneath it doesn't mean anything except for the ability of the card on top, um, which in the case of the Brute Smashes, if he's on a stack of two, so there's two cards underneath him, he deals his damage as Rand, it can't be Which means there. I couldn't shield it. Yep. Um, so, because I played an Auric unit yep. in the lane of the Loudmouth, I'm going to rotate him and request him. Now, he doesn't complete the second quest because a single card in an individual turn can't complete the second, can't complete another quest. Right. The, the, the unit, he could have a second card that could do that, but he only had one action. But next turn, the, the Brute Smash will rotate and complete that that second corner. Right. So the second corner of the Loudmouth, which is not a corner I think that we've seen on any card yet, is damage. Is the damage. Orange explosion. Yep. Um, so next turn when Brute Smasher does damage, it'll turn my war boss again. Right. Mega boss. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to rotate these two, because that would be your turn. Yep. And so I deal two damage, one for each corner. So Neil takes two here. I don't complete this Vora Star Strike quest because this is an ability. I haven't played an ability yet, but I do complete the first quest for Vandis uh, because that was a damage quest. And then um, I think that's it. I'm trying to decide now if I want to play a card here. I think I'm just going to forego my entire turn, and I'm going to draw two new cards to my hand. At the end of your turn, you get to draw a card for reaction you did not take. Correct. If you pass. So with Jesse being done, I'm going to turn all the cards that I control. Mm-hmm. Just a Bruce Masha. So I take another two. Then we're going to resolve it with the, yeah. does a two damage, and that damage will turn the mega turn boss. Turn the mega boss. Now the mega boss is ready for an ability to complete the, the corner. And now he's got two new actions. Yep. Um, so again, uh, well, I think I'm going to try to complete this quest here. So he only has two corners left. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being ability, so I'm going to play this Mosh Pit. Which deals three damage to me. And then I lose a card off the top of my deck, right? I discard a card, I believe, if I remember yep. right. It deals three damage to an opponent, and it's increased by the support of a unit in this lane. I have, the support is how many cards there are in the stack. If it's a stacking unit, I only have one, so it doesn't actually have support at all. So it just does the three, yep. and then he... Takes the top card of his deck and puts it into his discard right. pile. Which completes the, that corner. So the ability the loudmouth. will turn the loudmouth. Yep. And then the last corner is play a unit. And uh, normally, like we talked about last turn, you can't play units in the lanes that already have units, but I have a stacking unit. A pretty good one, too. The one that I drew last turn off of yep. my war boss recruiter. So this restarts the stack. So the X value on the Oryx Scrappers doesn't do anything this turn, but... What you get out of it is you get uh, the completion of the, so the loudmouth. So turn the loudmouth the rest of the way. And then we reveal the blessing. Because this actually all happens before the orc even comes into play. Correct. The, like, as this is like waiting to happen, it's in limbo. The, the quest yeah. happens. So I'm going to flip Smash and Bash, which this actually kind of like... Still we can show there. something. So right. this is like in limbo waiting to be played. Yep. So Smash and Bash does 5 damage to my opponent. Just so I go to 22. And then I rotate... Units, my highlight units, it highlights all the units. Uh, I only have the one, and it rotates them to their final corner. Correct. Which, in this case, does nothing, because the Smash's final corner is, is, an, X. is an X. Yep. But if he had damage or whatever, he would actually rotate to the last corner before this guy stacks. That's right. So he's going to stack. And the Oryx Scrappers 
Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to trigger this ability, so I have two more health. I apologize. Yeah. The Liberator Prime reduces his damage by one, so instead of dealing four, he should have dealt two there. But that only comes from the unit, so it doesn't impact the Mosh Pit or the Smash and Bash. All right, so the Oryx Scrappers does two damage on this corner and this corner, Right. but it's increased by one, one for every yeah. support, which would just be one in this case. So in future, as this guy rotates, he's going to do a little bit more damage because he's stacked on top of that. Right. Thing other card yep so that was my two actions and i will pass okay so now i rotate i do four to you uh no damage triggers there okay i'm gonna play a celestial prosecutor here which will start the liberator prime and he says on corners two and three increase the damage to your opponent by highlighting units by one and then on corner four, damage to your opponent. Yep, and and that card highlights units adjacent to it. This Correct. one, and if it was in a different lane, this one. Yep. But there's not one here, obviously, yep. in this game. So I'm only going to get the the benefit off the decimator, but um, you know that's okay. And I think I'll draw a card to end my turn. Okay. So I'm going to rotate my scrappers. And since it has support one, it would normally do three, but I'm going to reduce that by one from the protector, so I'm just going to take the base value two here. Um, I'm going to use my recruiter. Okay. Gets a so wog infusion. Me a wog infusion. Which is a warrior ability. No, wizard ability. Wizard ability, sorry. See, it's blue like the yeah, wizard. Yeah. Wizard <laughs> ability. I said the wrong word. Yeah. Um, warrior wizard, you know. So that that wog infusion is an ability that only Snazgar can play. Right. Um, but I will not be playing that right away. I am just going to pass my second action and draw a draw card. card. Okay. So these the Liberator falls off now because it exhausted out. This rotates to the three side, and this rotates to the one side, and so this deals four to you. Okay. Decisions, Neil. Decisions. <laughs> Alright, a couple of things that we should also note. You can never play the same card in the, the same turn twice. So if you use a card once, you can't play it a second time. That's an important rule there to are, understand. Yeah. And there are a certain number of things that would allow you to like put units into play or other things like that that would you can play two cards with the same that. name. Right. But you can't just like spend your action to play a card with that name two times. Right. So I'm gonna piercing shot you as an ability for three. Okay. I will go to nineteen. And then my second action I'm gonna opportunity strike, which if you had no units in play, this would be very powerful, but it's just gonna be two damage. But it it gets me the quest on board. So that's my two actions. Um, and so I will pass the turn. I'm going to turn the Scrampers. They have an X this corner, so nothing happens. Right. Um, I'm going to use my War Boss. This Heroic Act is one of the best in the game. For sure. Um, in this case, I hit an Auric. Yep. Uh, so he gets to and I take play two. it without using another action. It's all part of the Heroic Act. Right. So it comes into play like I play. It does two to him. The first corner of Recruiter is damaged, so right. I will rotate him. And... Then I'm going to use, just pass my second action and draw one. Okay. So we're going to rotate. That rotates the decimator out. I do nothing with the Celestial Prosecutor this turn. I'm going to go ahead and play a Skybolt Judicator here. This says, damage your opponent, increase this by three if highlighted champion does not control a unit. Since I put it in front of a wizard, that seems pretty good. And then my second action, I'm going to play the Stormstrike Fulminator, which completes Vandis's quest. And this is a blessed weapon, so increase damage done by highlighted units by the corner. When this card increases damage, rotate it one step forward. So, and this hits on adjacent lanes. So I've got two pretty decent sized swingers there. Um, and that was my two actions. Alright, so going to my turn, this will turn to its last corner and do... Three minus one, so I take two, go to 18. And this will do two. 
Okay, and min no, minus one because of the Storm Strike Fulminator, so I take one. Because his first corner and second corner are minus one damage. Okay. And then... I will... Uh, let's see. This is kind of rough. With the old... Uh, just got a lot of damage coming my way. I guess not for a couple of turns. No, it's got a few. You got a little time. Okay. Well, that's good. I'm gonna recruit. Okay. And hit a war chant. So this is a spell. It's gonna go in my hand because it's not an auric. Um. I am actually just gonna play that. Spell. It's a good one. So war chant when it rotates to the first corner, it allows him to draw the top card of his deck, and if it's a unit, he can deploy it without costing him an action, which keeps him with two actions. But the other benefit of it is is that it will trigger the first corner of the unit, and then it'll trigger the second corner, and any units to the right of it, because of the order of operations, will get the second corner activation a second time. That's very powerful. Uh, so there, there's a lot of damage right there. War chant represents a lot of damage on anything that gets hit by it. So I'm, I'm really hoping... He doesn't grab a big smasher or something like that out of it. Because it's a, it's a good way for me to take uh, about six damage. So that will be my two actions after recruiting and playing the spell. Okay. So you can go ahead. All right. So these rotate. This rotates to the fourth corner. Does four damage to you. Yep. You can see I'm, I'm getting low here. I'm now going to use Vorus's once per game ability. And I'm going to, so that we know that it's been used. They gave us these handy dandy little trackers. <laughs> That's so, cool. I'm going to use his ability, and I'm going to restart all of my units. And then I'll draw one card. Okay. Okay, so on my turn, all my things are going to rotate. Yep. And then we re anything that's on its last corner goes away. Correct. This takes the whole stack. Yep. And uh, now then we, we start doing stuff left to right. Left so. to right. So we trigger the War Chan ability. So yep. he draws the top card face up. If it's a unit, which it's not, it's a spell. Um... This guy goes to an X and does nothing. Right. So now you got your two actions. I'm glad I dodged the war chant there. Not going to lie. <laughs> All right. So. I guess I'm going to recruit. Okay. And you get a scrapper. It's a scrapper. Seems pretty good. So that rotates one around. Because you played an orc unit on the war boss? Yeah. Yep. So orc unit. Yep. Turns this guy. Um, and then. I'm going to play. A smashes in this lane. All right, I take two. Turn the war boss. Sounds good. Go ahead. All right. Uh, rotate. Nothing happens yet because all my corners are not lined up very well, but that happens sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and for my first action play a Disruptive Liberator, which means you can't continue deploying on that stack, and my second action I'll draw a card. Okay. And that's it. So my guy's turn. Huh? Do this. All right. Yep. Which is a Wagyu Wagyu Fusion. Fusion. <laughs> You do not have very much success with that card. This card's still really good. Even if you're not playing guys off this, it's still really good. Yep. Um, so that's a three damage with a minus one. So yep. I take two, go to 13. And two damage here. And two damage there. So I go to 11. So it's 13 to 11 right now, folks. Neil's on the 13. I'm on the 11. So, um, I'm going to recruit a shield okay. onto this stack. It's really good here. Yeah. Really, really good here. So, so the orc stops. I, I did miss out on a little bit of damage from the orc because I'm not using one of the corners, but I need this guy to block some damage here. So, he's going to do one yep. when he comes to play. He's going to turn the my corner because I play the unit. Yep. Um, and then, like we talked about at the beginning of the game, I'm going to remove that uh, yep. Fulminator with this Deadly Chop. I take another one. It does a damage drop. And that's going to turn the last corner of the War Boss. Yep. And it's going to 
play my favorite card, Ushering of the Law. Yep. And I draw three cards face up. Yep. Any units this way can be deployed. Yep. So he hits on two units, but neither one of them are stacking so units. The War Chant goes in my hand. I have one space for this big stabba. Yep. Another big stabba goes in my hand. Right. And uh, that was my two actions. Okay. All right. So we rotate here, and rotate here, and rotate here. And then starting with left to right, so this does three damage, but I think you shield all three with this? Because yep. this yep. this has prevent this much plus the stack. Right. So this does four plus three for no unit makes seven, plus one makes eight, plus another two makes ten. For which I will take seven off the block. Right. And go to six. And then this one, which the shield basher can't block, will deal four. Yep, and go to two. Correct. All right. Um, and yeah. since I didn't complete, I did three damage, but because it was shielded, I didn't actually complete the Liberator Prime quest there, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but I think at this point with you at two, I'm still in a lot of trouble at two. Yeah, I think I'm just going to draw two cards and see what happens because I need some, okay. I need some, uh, some gas in case so, something does happen. Turn all my stuff. So this guy is just doing one minus one, so zero. This that guy, guy does zero. This guy does zero. Yep. And this guy does not is on an X. Mm -hmm. And this is awesome. All right. So what am I going to do? I still have to not die. I'm sorry. I, this guy didn't do four. You should be four higher. I apologize. What is that. his last corner? You should be... Um, it's, it's four damage, but I'm not on the last corner. I think I called out four damage. Oh, that. okay. You should be at six. Um, well, that's extra good for me. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> Maybe I won't die. Um... So, I got a lot of cards in hand. I'm not really worried about drawing cards at this point. Uh, I am going to gain some life. So, I'm going to play this War Infusion on my wizard. All right. It so, is, that's three damage to me, right? Two damage, two damage to you. To I gain three. Yeah. So, I take seven. You gain three. It's not ideal because this corner is spell on this corner's ability, but I'm in a situation where like, right. and, I just and, don't want to be killed. And I have no... You, if you have a spell on a wizard, you can't play an ability on it. Unlike having like a unit out where you can still play abilities on on yeah. those corners. Um, and then for my second action, I'm gonna play a deadly chop in this lane. And okay. Kill yours. Person. Kills the prosecutor. Yeah. Okay. And does one damage to you. Does one damage. So I go to six. And then I'll pass. Okay. So we rotate here. This does five to you from the blessed weapons and the disruptive yep. liberator. And I block two of it. Two of it. So you take three. Minus six. Yep. This rotates out. All right. Well, Neil, you're going to hate the fact you removed me because I'm going to divine vengeance you for six to win the game. Well, that's not very nice. Yeah, I know. So that's uh, that's a game of Sigmar. I mean, we can we can play another one. We've got a little bit of time. We don't have to explain as much. We've got about twelve minutes left on the clock, or we can call it good. So. Um, it was a. Uh, it was. This is the Stormcast restart deck. In my opinion, is one of the better uh, order decks. I did almost build the Celestine Prime deck just for um, showing Celestine because he's so cool. But <laughs> yeah, he's um, like the very best. Yeah, but we can do a best of two out of three. That's kind of the. That's the pitch format if we want to go a little long. Um, I don't think that's well, a bad thing. Let's play another game. Yeah, we got time to play, play at least one. At least one more. But I, I, I'm really liking um, where order is. A couple of things I, I would tell you differently. Like, Snazgar wants to be in the far left lane because that gives you all three deploy unit slots for... Uh, yeah, the, the deck that I play does not have a wizard in it. Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, does this deck have a Gaze of Mork in it? Does not. Okay. Yeah, so, so it's got... Uh, two putrid pukes, two uh, invigorating chants, and then three war chants. So it's really, it really is a unit deck at its core. Uh, but the invigorating chants are very good when you get low in life, like to, to put it out, and then you snazgar as heroic as your action, because you gain uh, one, two, four, seven health off of it, and you do That's it all in one turn. turn. So like it's, it's just like prolongs the game out a little bit longer, completes a snazgar corner. Um, and it can even be done like after you've completed a couple of spell quests. You really want, obviously, there's no mulligan rule, so you can't guarantee like you're gonna get the war chant. But like you really want war chant early to like 
flood your board with like yeah big I, swingy damage guys. And Snazgar, as, as wizards go, they're difficult to quest usually. Yeah, Snazgar is one of the easier ones. Yeah, but like I didn't have a spell early. Yeah, and uh, so he just kind of sat there and didn't do much. Yeah, there's there's games like that that happens with it, and I've had I've had you know like I would say you had somewhat unlucky luck with the war chant because what? you hit both the wog infusion and uh, and the. Uh, uh, yeah, it turns out if I had just double wog infusioned you, I probably would have won, because like you would have fored me and not sixed me. <laughs> well, sure, and I but mean, you can't you double wog infusion in the same turn. So oh I think, yeah, of I think you were you were correct in that. Uh, since you lost, you want you want choice? Yeah, I still want to go second. Okay, I think that makes sense. I'm, I mean, you punish me a little bit for that because you have the guys that that I can't play units, right? And getting to do that before I get to do that. Uh, is powerful right um all right we'll try your far left snazgar all right so we'll put boris in front of snazgar and i'll put vandis here okay okay and i will just do it with the same decision making i did last time and i'll put liberator and prime in front of the war boss now remove a guy all okay. right so i get five cards you get four i got five cards or, you get four yeah that's right Sorry, I said that. I meant a different way here. Yeah. Um, all right. I'll start with a Hurricane Raptor and deal one to you. Rotating the prime, yeah. and then I'll draw a card. Okay. I will take that. Okay. This is the other guy that I can't play stuff, right? I, you can't do anything on that lane. He completely locks down the lane, period. You can still do heroic abilities, I think. Uh, correct. Play abilities yeah. or units or spells. So, so you can still use a heroic ability, but... For clarity for our viewers, if you don't know, the, the card says you can't play abilities. You're allowed to use Heroic Act. You just can't yeah, play Yeah, because a Heroic Act isn't actually an ability. From your hand. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to play the War Chant this time. I think that's good. Yeah. And I'm going to play... Uh, big Stab Crew. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So I'll do two. We'll put out another raptor. Okay. Into that lane. And the reason I, I, I don't really want to do this, but to be clear, like, if I don't do this, that stab recruit gets a plus two for not having a unit in front of it. So, like, Neil just rotates through for a total of three, and then another uh, four is seven damage off the stab recruit. So, like, I kind of just have to do that. He also triggered that yeah. quest. Uh, so, I, I kind of don't have a choice there, Man. but I'm, I'm going to draw one card. I'm burning a lot of calories, like, turning these cards left and right. I really should be playing on Android. <laughs> yeah, start with the War Chant. Rotate them. Yep. And then trigger War Chant. So you draw the top card face up. You hit a unit. This is very powerful. I guess I can't put it here, so I have to put it here. Right. Because you got the guys. Okay, I got so. the, yep. So because of the War Chant, he triggers two damage. So I go uh, 32. Then it goes to its second corner because of the War Chant and hits for another two, taking me to 30. And then now you activate the rest. So you do one damage here, so I take 29. And then you hit me again for two off of the Smasher, and I take another two, go to 27. It's so good. <laughs> Why does it double trigger him? Because it, you actually didn't activate this unit, so when it's to the right of the War Chant, you go through the normal order of operations. Oh, because we're still in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're still in the thing where you'd, like, start over here. And... Correct. Okay. Yeah, this makes War Chant just insane. That seems like it shouldn't work that way. It does. They, Play Fusion has actually clarified that it works that way, which is incredible. I've just never played that card before. That's yeah. cool. Um, I guess I have two actions. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of actions after having done a bunch of stuff. It is. Um, I'm going to recruit, mm -hmm. even though I can't play it. I hit a mosh pit. Yeah. So this, um, is, this is where, like... We were talking a lot about like the destruction balances, and one of the things that they're balancing right now is a card called Wog Chanter, which is a additional action unit. So it doesn't do any damage, but just gives you an extra action every turn. And I'm just gonna drop my last. Like if you play if you play War Chant with that guy in particular, like you get first action, first corner, second action, you get you go to a fourth action, and then you get a fifth action off of the second activation of it. So you get five actions for a game that normally would have two. That's a super monster play, obviously. So that's one of the one of the big punishers. Watch well, Hunter is a messed up card. So I'll hit you for two. I do lose this Raptor. Yep. 
I'm going to go ahead and play a Disruptive Liberator. Yep. And um, draw a card. Okay. So we're, I'm just trying to keep his his uh, War Boss Recruiter down for a little bit. War Chant happens. Mm -hmm. And you I hit a shield. shield. Yep. So you could play that. It's it's. I don't know if you have to. I think it's... Uh, I'm gonna, you may deploy it, yeah. I'm, I'm going to put it here. Just quest completion. I can't because this guy. Right. Uh, so it's just quest completion for you yeah. at this point. You do one to me, uh, and then it rotates to the second corner. Yep. It's not like the best guy to hit off that, but... No, because I you don't get the double, like... I mean, that's still like somewhere between one and two actions worth of doing stuff. Because right. Because I got to draw a card and play a card. Yeah, that's true. Um, and you took two from this. I did not. Okay. Sorry. So this turns because he did some damage. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do the same trick I did last turn where I mosh pitch you. So I take three. To turn the loudmouth. And, and I lose the I top card of my deck. Play a stacker and turn the loudmouth. Yep. So let's see what happens. This is. Renewed Warlust, I gain four life. Yep. This is a great card. It is an awesome card. And I draw two cards. Okay. And that is you. All right, so this come. Uh, were you able to play the Scrapper? Because of the Raptor? Oh, no, I'm not allowed to. I'm che cheating. I'm cheating. <laughs> we just talked about that, too. Yeah, so you're, you're back to just that corner, right? Yep. And you're four health back down for now. Well, it should be this corner. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm upside down. Sorry. Yeah. So you still have an action left, though. Well, what am I gonna do now? I don't know. This isn't even good. Um, I can't help you. I mean, you can remove the liberator, I guess, if you wanted to. I don't know. <laughs> nope. I'll just draw. Okay. So now the raptor falls off. What hurt me is you hit a triumphant smash. That really hurt. So I do one. Um, I'm just going to draw two. Okay. My guys go away. Alright, well, I am going to quest that guy out. Okay. Now you get the four and yep. draw two cards. Go back to 30. Mm -hmm. Then I guess I'll mosh pitch you with this guy so I can turn him a little bit. Go to eighteen. This one does four to you because I have okay. a single good go single down stack. Oh, this is I, I put a deadly chop in my discard pile. Go to I put a mosh pit in my discard pile. All right. And I lose a Strike Force Liberator, which would be helpful right now. And I'm done. Okay. So we'll do two. Yep. And I'm just going to draw two. Gore Choppa does one to you. Okay. Uh, yep, I take one. 16. Oryx Grappers. Okay. Turn this guy over. Might have Gork. I take three. Thirteen. And then I'll draw. Okay. This guy rotates out. Alright. And then I'm... What do I want to do here? Yeah, I think I want to complete a quest. So we'll go Opportunity Strike and do two. Okay. And then we'll go... Storm Strike Fulminator, okay. which will complete. And I get a Storm Forge that says, when a highlighted Storm cast unit leaves play, draw a card. Okay. Um, I like that one. That's my two uh, my two actions. Okay. Uh, Gorchapa does three. 
Orc Scrappers does two, and Gork does two, three. Okay, so I take only one from the Scrapper because of yep. Prime. So I go to nine, but then I go to six from the Gork. Yep. Um, this is called being in a lot of trouble. Yeah, you, you're in trouble. I'm going to Deadly Chop your this guy. Take one, go to five. So the Deadly Chop on top of removing it does one damage, which is actually going to turn the War Boss. And then I'm going to Recruit. Okay. To which I hit shield, does one to you, and turns the war boss again. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Well, I'm not going to go out without a complete fight, so I'll Divine Vengeance for six. Okay. Pretty foil Divine yeah, Vengeance. 20. <laughs> <laughs> foil cards is something I didn't know existed until we sat down to play today, guys, because uh, And I'll do a scavenger. We'll only play it on the app, really. Okay. And Oh, i got to draw a card off of that. I'm sorry. That yeah. might change that, but I'm good. Yep, we're good. Okay. Uh, none from this. This goes away. None from this. Three from Gork. Yep, I go to one. Two games, no removal for me. You hit the one I would have yeah. had, but that, that hurts. That hurts. My Triumph of Smashes did not show up. Yeah. Uh, there's one. That's it. That's the game. All right. So that went fast. That, we played that in exactly 13 minutes. <laughs> yeah, the, one of the best things about this game, and it's even faster on Android because... The computer takes care of all the upkeep stuff. Is uh, I just got flooded with abilities. Like, yeah. all my abilities showed up in that that hand. Like, I kept drawing cards, going, "I've got to hit units eventually." There's 20 units in the deck. <laughs> like, and nope, <laughs> here's here's more abilities. <laughs> yeah. So, it's it's a rarity, I think, to play a 15 minute game on the app. Like, it's quick, it's fun. It's yeah. Easy. Oh yeah. No, it's it's, it's, it's a 10 minute game because you don't have any of the the maintenance work of rotating cards and doing that sort of thing. But I enjoy playing the physical game a lot. Like, oh I, yeah, it's it, if I, playing this game for enjoyment factor, uh, I would rather sit here with physical cards and play across from you. Obviously, just like playing with your friends mm -hmm. anytime, I think is better than playing randos on the internet. But the app just adds a dynamic element to the game as a whole. Yep. That like you know, if if we're not hanging out, uh, I get to play, like laying in my bed or. Uh, all right. So I I didn't tell Neil we were gonna do this. So I'm surprising him, but I want to put a five star rating together on the games that we do, like what we think about them, and talk about one positive and one negative for the game. Um, as our kind of recap for the punch-up plays. We can come back and play more of this game in the future, so if you want to see us play more games of this, uh, you know, let us know in the comments if you want to see us, and, and let us know what you want to see lined up. Do you want to see an all-wizard you know, all wizard deck, or whatever it may be? Um, you know, we'll, we'll be happy to do that. But, uh, Neil, so to start off, on a scale of one to five, five stars being like an absolute, you would play this game anytime anybody ever wanted you to play it, or like you desire to play it frequently, uh, to one, which is I would never play this game again in my life. What, what, where would you rate this game? I mean, for me, I think this game is a five, and it, it's like dorky because, like you said, I didn't know we were gonna do this. I didn't have like yeah. anything set up, um, and I don't want to be that guy of like, oh, this is always a five. I love this thing, but I actually do love this game. Yeah. Like, legitimately, there's just a ton of things about this game that I find very interesting and very appealing, and. You know, I spent a lot of this cast talking about how simple and elegant I think the game is and how short and easy it is to play. And, you know, I think those are all positives for everyone. Though some of you may be like, well, if it's so short and easy and simple, why would it have such a, like, yeah, 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 like, go on and on. Like, why is this so difficult? Like, why would you play this for a long time? And, well, what makes a game elegant, I think, is that... The mechanics of the game are simple, but the decisions are difficult. And this game has that. Like, it just, it's fun. All the games are different because of the champions that you start with. Like, I mean, like I said, for me in the rank scene on the app, it's a lot of Destruction Mirrors. Um, because Destruction is kind of the best deck on the app, though I, we don't really know right now after the changes. But for a long time it was. But that doesn't mean that we're playing the same game every time. Like... A setup like this with the one Snazgar and the Loudmouth, or maybe there's like Recruiter plus Boar Boss plus Boar Boss plus Ripsaw. Sure. Like, like there's tons of different setups. And while the cards in the deck tend to be similar, they function differently because the decks that have like the Ripsaw that we talked about want to quest really fast and they try to beat you with your blessings. And the deck that I like to play with, the Gordrak, 
like tries to beat you with card advantage and action advantage and um there's another wizard that i've seen quite often in destruction that um the cunning drought shaman is that is that the one that you don't die yeah if you sacrifice yeah yep. so like if something would kill you you can sacrifice one of the highlighted units in front or adjacent to mm -hmm. instead of dying and you go to one like that guy's kind of cool so the game has a lot of reach in differentiation while remaining simple to play and mm -hmm. i think that's that's great and you know i played magic for a long time i played a lot of card games in my life like this game is super accessible but still fun at a high level mm -hmm. and so though i I just have a lot of positive things to say about it. <laughs> All right, so for me, I'm not quite a five. I, I like the game a lot. Um, I'm a four and a half right now, and I would be willing to review each set independently as that goes. But this set to me at four and a half is still saying a lot. Um, I, I think one of the pros to the game is much like you touched on the elegance of the game, the uh, the wildly kind of swingy behavior that comes from the blessings at times, and then like. Uh, the tactical nuance that goes into understanding the corner rotations and how to do that. So, like in our game one today, like the corner rotations mattered, right? Uh, and how I set up my Stormcast units in order to maximize their value. I lost one of those. So I didn't think I was going to keep them all. If I'd kept them all, it'd have just been a blowout. But um, I was able to set up my Celestial Prosecutor to go in line with, you know, the the Skyball Judicator and. Uh, I had it set up also for the Stormstrike Fulminator to where, like, I was going to swing for the fences there for, like, 20-some damage or something if you didn't remove something. And you remove the, the safest thing to remove without taking damage yourself. Uh, but you forego, you went and foregoed more damage off the, the Fulminator or the Skyball Judicator in that scenario, right? So I, I think that, that the, ta the tactical nuance and the fact that card evaluation in this game is so very different than any other card game That's I've ever played. True. So like those were some of my major pros. My one con to this game is really not so much a con to the game as much as it's kind of a con to the developer. And and that is that in one set, which it's only one set, so I'm, I'm willing to be a little bit forgiving on it, we had such a grossly imbalanced process yeah. with destruction in particular, and, and more specifically, the action economy of destruction uh, in a game where action economy nets you cards, that that's that's a right. to I, me that's a major like that's like a major oversight. And and only reason why I say that is because the game was still in some form of development even when like Spirit of Rebellion for Destiny was coming out. So if you're plugged in at all to card games in the world, then you understand the if, when you have a limited action economy system like Destiny has or like this game has, how powerful extra actions can really be. And so I feel like, you know, Play Fusion kind of missed the boat on creating a much better initial yeah. experience. Uh, and and I, I think that they're doing, like we said earlier in the stream, they're doing all the right stuff to fix it. Uh, and, and so that's the only reason that's really keeping me from that last half a star for this game is just that alone. But I think when you sit down and you play this game and you just, you take some of that like I, you still had action efficiency in this deck, but you take some of the gross action efficiency out, like the wall chanter to yeah. you know wall chanter, like it, or the war chanter wall chanter, like like all of a sudden you're not making five actions a turn or seven actions a turn. I mean, I've played games on the app where destruction has had seven actions in a turn, and they just literally. Uh, I mean, if you if you play ushering of the wog and you hit that blessing and you have a gordrak still up, like you just go from like. Uh, wherever you were sitting at to like, oh, I'm going to draw half my deck. Yeah. And, and, and anytime you have a watch enter in play and you hit like a smash and bash or you get to Gordrak, like you're just, you're through the roof. Right? Exactly. Like, like you may not hit seven or whatever like that, but you'll have done five things and still drawn two cards. Exactly. Like it's, you're, you're absolutely right. The, the printed version of the first set is a little out of whack for mm -hmm. destruction, but I, I think they're handling it well. Mm -hmm. And, for me, like, the games that I want to play most often and that I get the most enjoyment out of is something like this, where it's simple and it's easy and, like, like I can sit down with my tablet and I can flip on the, the football game and I can just, like, ding out some ranked games right. and I'm, like, having a great time. Right. And, and this yeah. game has that. I, I, think, I think the app is an easy reason for why this game is much higher ranked, for sure, and... 
I think combine that with the uniqueness that we talked about and the card evaluation process that we talked about. And I think this game is really a good game. And I really do believe that, you know, obviously five stars from Neil, four and a half for me, we're, we're talking really highly about this game. So despite our criticisms, if you like card games at all, and I hope you do, you're and, on our channel. And if you just, um, if you like, like technology and uh, like forward thinking, the, dynamic of like physical versus digital in this game is second to none that's right like it's this is this is moving to the future yeah i i totally agree i think this changes the game for card games in general as the future evolve that's that's scary for a little independent card game developer <laughs> like us but um you know the 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 result of that is is that this is exactly what if i was making a digital card game the way they combine the physical and digital is exactly how i would have done it I mean, I, I couldn't, I can't even remotely criticize any part of that because it is 100% the way I would have done it. Right. And and that's saying something because I've seen a lot of stuff. Like, I've never bought into the Hearthstone model. I've played Hearthstone quite a bit. And, like, I just always felt like I had a really hard time wanting to invest money in just having digital product that I don't even own. If Hearthstone shuts down tomorrow, I, I don't own those cards. I just, I just funnel money into a game for stuff I don't own. Right. And and um, if if you know you look at Magic Arena like I kind of or MTG Online even like I like that I can play Magic Online I, I enjoy the game of Magic a ton but I I don't like the fact that like if I want to go still go sit down at the shop or sit down with you or sit down with another friend and play Magic I can't right like I if I if I bought all the stuff on Magic Arena right. I don't have the physical cards to go do it so now I have to double buy everything which really puts me off of playing either the digital version or the physical version. It doesn't allow me to do both. And so the fact that I can do both in this game is 100% the reason why it rates so high for me. And and the game itself is good. It's elegant. It's simple. It, it has really good decision points that are hard to uh, when, articulate. When you, but, when you get to the point where you're like playing sweeping Grunta yep. into like an empty board... Just so your opponent like has to not Stop play playing. guys yeah. for two turns, like you you probably just discarded a card for nothing other than time. But it's like like those are decisions that I like. Yeah, um, there there's absolutely decisions made there. I mean, like um, you know, like me playing the Hurricane Raptors, which by the way I want one more Hurricane Raptor. So if anybody's got a Hurricane Raptor out there and wants to sell <laughs> it to me, let me know because uh, I I don't want to open another box just for Hurricane Raptor, but I do have uh, I do have a need for one more Hurricane Raptor. Um, you know, like, that dictates a lot because it stops my opponent from playing on those lanes, but they don't want to just completely forego turns for two or three turns while the Hurricane Raptor exists. So, uh, and it could be even longer. Like, that last game I didn't use Vandis. I was very careful. I almost used Vandis when I had Double Raptor just to keep the, the board, but I was, like, trying to figure out how to get with all the abilities. I mean, again, here we are talking about, like, really deep decisions that had to be made there because I kept drawing abilities and kept going, oh, well, do I... Do I use Vandis as an action and, and reset more time? Maybe I should have. Like, at the, at, and that's, you know, those are those are the decisions to me that aren't obvious when you watch a game of this on stream or when you play it as an early player. But as you develop, like like many card games, when you get to a certain number of games or a certain level of play, like you're spending a lot more time playing around your opponent than playing your own cards, right. like just because you can. Like, yep. And in this game specifically because your cards are it's all tempo based where they just kind of like they're there for an amount of time they do what they do and then they're done you know they're it's not a permanent it's not like a, a creature in magic or um a pokemon you know that yeah. stays there and fights and does its thing for however long you can keep it there these have a these are on a timer and you're like you know i'm gonna get x amount of thing out of it and then it's done and because of that like maybe i don't just want to run it into an empty board right no, I completely agree. So, um, obviously, you're getting raving reviews from the Punch It crew on this game. This is a game that we play. So, if it's a game that you want to play, you see us out and about, know that we have cards and decks, and we'll be happy to play this game with you, too. And uh, we'll be back with another Punch It Plays next week. Um, we're not sure what it's going to be yet. We're, we're working out that schedule. But the main thing is, 
if there's a game you want to see us play, specifically we want to play card games. So deck builders um, and, and strategy card games, those are our wheelhouse. Those are what we love to play. Uh, but we'll also play board games. So if you want to see us play... Uh, definitely not adverse to playing. No, games. not at all. Not at all. So if you want to see us play Rising Sun or something like that, obviously Rising Sun requires three, so we're going to have to recruit a, a third person in for that, that session. Uh, let us know. Let us know what games you would like, enjoy hearing us talk about and, and play, and we'll we'll do our best to fit them into the schedule. Well, this is Jesse Bergman. I'm uh, with Punch Entertainment. I'm here with Neil Molman, lead developer for Punch It, and we are going to sign off for today. Thanks, guys. <laughs>